Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulih al-kareem wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in amma ba'd. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace and blessings. Hope you're all well. Inshallah, it's your host, Shabir Hassan. Welcome back to another Ilm Feed podcast show. And uh, today's one's going to be very, very good. Uh, reason being is because it's very specific to a month uh, that we've all been waiting for. Uh, it's none other than the blessed month of Ramadan and uh, this is the perfect show for you all especially in terms of last minute kind of preparation uh, it's it, it's it's good it's going to be good in terms of planning your Ramadan out setting uh, those goals for this Ramadan and making sure that it's going to be the best Ramadan every year we say the same thing every year it's the same thing We're like this year is going to be the Ramadan it's going to be the best Ramadan yet and then subhanallah like by the time if you know it, three, four weeks have gone and we're talking about Eid. So we want to make sure, inshallah, through this episode that we are going to not just say it this time, we're going to actually set action points for this Ramadan, inshallah. So it gives me a great pleasure uh, to introduce from a very far part of the country, uh, <laughs> a very special guest uh, who is the founder of Ramadan Legacy, which we're going to speak about, inshallah, shortly. It's none other than our dear brother, Shabazz Mirza. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum wa salam. How, How are you? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good, good. alhamdulillah. How are you? Good, good, alhamdulillah. I uh, can't complain. And um, I think as far as I'm aware, We've had guests from all of the UK, we've had guests from, um, not UK as in England, and then we have like uh, from America, Canada, but alhamdulillah, you are our first guest from Scotland, oh, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. So warm welcome to, to uh, you and all our We feel honored to be here. <laughs> <laughs> alhamdulillah, it's, it's, it's brilliant. And uh, I know you had a long, long uh, travel and, and drive yeah. down. So uh, welcome to the Onfi Studio. Thank you. And um, yeah, I mean, I mentioned Ramadan Legacy, which we're going to speak about, inshallah. Um, and I know you, you, you've been busy doing loads of different things and this is one kind of uh, project we could say and one vision that you've had for some time now and that you've been working on. But um, getting straight into it, um, since the month of Ramadan is literally here now, um, I'm just quite interested in terms of the word legacy. Uh, it's become quite cliched I think nowadays. Mm. Many like speakers, um, non-Muslim or even away from Muslims, they always speak about legacy, mm. like, you know, leave behind a legacy, um, etc. So you hear it a lot. But what is, uh, I mean, since, since you know, uh, what your vision is, Ramadan legacy, uh, what does legacy mean to you? Uh, and, you know, what can we kind of take away from that word? Yeah, legacy for us, I think, is our journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. And it's like the hero's journey. So that famous book where... We understand how how does a hero become a hero in the journey that they go through. Mm. And so Ramadan Legacy was really about writing your own story of your own journey with Allah, where you've come from, the challenges that you'll go through, how you will overcome them, mm. and how you break away those layers to become closer to your creator. So it's a, it's a personal thing as opposed mm. to legacy in the context <clears throat> of here's how everyone will remember me yeah it's like here's how allah will remember me mm, i see so how allah will remember us as individuals in terms of i guess kind of the actions really yeah i guess what what we end up doing in the yeah. end um, that's how allah will remember us so it's interesting take because like you said usually the word legacy is more to do with the people like mm. how will the people remember me mm. uh or kind of the impact that I've had on the people around me. Um, so I, th I think now in terms of Ramadan, um, since we're talking about legacy, why is it that you kind of pinpointed Ramadan uh, when it could have just been, you could have just spoken about a Muslim legacy in general, mm. right? It could have been just any kind of legacy or just a lifetime legacy. But you've gone for like Ramadan legacy. And obviously we know it's a blessed month, but why why did you decide to pinpoint Ramadan for mm. out of out of the whole yeah, year? Yeah, it's a great question. Mm. I think when speaking to young Muslims, not only in the UK, but across the world, Ramadan is a time which they refer back to where they've experienced like a higher sense of self they've yeah. experienced a better <clears throat> version of themselves so we like to say that like ramadan is a glimpse of the person that you can be every day mm. so we focused on ramadan because we realized that just naturally allah makes it a blessed month and you know the shayateen are locked up and you know there's nothing really in the way of us becoming a better person so we thought if we can really focus in on that and let people to connect with themselves and allah in this month 
and give them tools and practices to help them do that, then maybe then then that can extend beyond the year. And Ramadan is like, I don't know, like I think growing up it was like the week before Ramadan, Ramadan is coming, now it's yeah. time to be a better person. But it's one of the pillars of Islam and it's something which should be extended throughout the entire year. So we really wanted to focus and reinforce that for the next generation. Mm. What's, what, was, what was your experiences growing up with Ramadan? Because I guess everyone has a different experience. I, I mean, now, obviously, you know, you've matured over the years, you've developed yourself. So now mm. you, you, you would understand the importance of Ramadan more than any other, any, any other mm. point in your life. But growing up, what was Ramadan like for you? Yeah, it was like when I was younger, like Ramadan was just, you know, a kind of like fasting marathon, right? Yeah. You're just not eating or drinking and that's yeah. really all it is. And then you have your, your dinner. I remember when I first started fasting, it was a winter time. So like mm. 4 p.m. you're breaking your fast. Now it's like 10 p.m. in Scotland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's uh, pretty Scotland tough now. Scotland a lot more actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's like an hour after London. Yeah. So I'm always jealous of my friends in London when they're breaking the fast earlier. But yeah, it was really just kind of, you know, you go through the motions, but you're not understanding mm. what it means. And, uh, and yeah, like truthfully speaking, speaking i guess like when you're younger you take it more in a relaxed manner but then yeah. as you get older you think of it in a more serious way and um so now like it's more of a, a spiritual exercise like this month it's like this spiritual boot camp mm. as opposed to a just a, a fasting boot camp or a way f- because my family's doing it and the community's doing it um so yeah that's like what my experience has been yeah it's uh I, even growing up for for me personally i mean it was like you said it was a, it was a marathon i mean I, I remember when we when i was growing up anyway uh, when i first kind of started fasting um the days were very really short because mm. uh, that was the time where it fell more towards winter times we were coming now towards mm. the summertime more more and more uh so for me it was like it was a walk in the park if i'm honest with you <laughs> but i never i never understood yeah like what it was does that make sense and i think a lot of people experience that yeah where for me it was like Okay, it's just I'm missing breakfast and lunch, pretty much. And by the time I get home, it's That's just like right. a delayed lunch. Yeah. Um. So it's not that bad. And then obviously, you know, you, you could feel like as as a child, I could feel the month is different to the other months. You know, mm. it's like a buzz. Mm. I go to the mosque, you know, my father takes me to the mosque. I see more and more people there. Mm. There's a community vibe. There's that spirit. But I think, yeah, you're right. Uh, as, uh, you know, growing up, we just didn't really understand what Ramadan meant other mm. than stay away from food and drink for a bit yeah. uh, and, and and you know so on and so forth so how does that you know, how how is it any different for you now then would you say um, you know like I said everyone kind of develops so what would you say looking back now is is completely different I know you've said you've kind of you, you take it more as a spiritual journey mm. but in terms of the specifics like what would what would you do differently now in Ramadan yeah I, I was reflecting on when you were talking there I think like before on the weekend if mm. I was fasting I'd play like video games all day because I know uh, that it's yeah, going to yeah, take up all the time, time. <laughs> time you play video games for like 10 hours like oh alhamdulillah <laughs> it's uh, iftar time now yeah. um, but now it's really about like what can I really change about myself this Ramadan mm. so it's really about like reflecting on <clears throat> my downfalls and successes over the past year and thinking about what can I do to rectify myself or what mm. can I do to improve in what I'm already doing and it's really about setting that that theme for the year or for this Ramadan and tackling it so mm. I see it's almost like I don't know if you watch a movie called Shrek right but there's this <laughs> famous uh, scene where Donkey and Shrek are like um, having a discussion and yeah. Shrek's like oh ogres are like layers right we have yeah, different yeah. layers and we peel each other and then you get to the core of who we are and it's kind of like Ramadan right Ramadan <laughs> has layers and every year we peel off a layer and we get to the core of our existence and mm. who we really are and what we really want to do in life so it's just a journey of peeling off those layers every year yeah, <laughs> I, like, I like that. I like that. <laughs> a lot of people can relate to Shrek. Yeah. <laughs> um, especially since he's he, he is, is that based in Scotland. Yeah, that's it right. Is, yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Coincidence there. <laughs> um, I was gonna say. I mean, I, I was actually reading something really um, interesting, quite amazing actually, um, recently about Ramadan and just the Arabic in terms of what Ramadan means and the mm. origins of the word. So I was reading how it comes from the word Ramad or the word Ramda, mm. uh, which gives the meaning of something like scorching heat, mm. um, scorching heat or something extremely hot baking. Um, and obviously the, the Arabs at the time could relate to that a lot more than we do, especially coming from Scotland. Yeah. I don't think you see we much of the scorching that. heat <laughs> here, here in England. We don't get much either. Um, so it's, it's very interesting. So then when you look at 
why would Ramadan have a link to heat for? Mm. It's not just because of summer or anything like that, because obviously Ramadan changes. Uh, it's actually because some scholars say that Ramadan this month burns away your sins. Mm. It burns away your sins, mm. just like that heat. And that's where the that's why Ramadan is called Ramadan. And that's why out of all the months, Allah decided this is the month which has been ordained for us to fast. I think that's really interesting, actually, how, mm. you know, obviously coming back to why you've kind of pinpointed Ramadan is that this literally is the month that even, you know, like Allah has chosen for us because it's the month where he's going to literally burn away our sins. It's going to be a fresh and it's going to be a clean start for us, you know. So is that something also that you are kind of looking into in terms of the Ramadan legacy, which is this is almost like a training program for the for the rest of the year? Mm. Yeah, that's a great question. Um you know, when you were talking there, I was thinking about, you know, just the classic, like, superhero scene in mm. any movie where it's Iron Man or Superman, and yeah. they're like, for some reason, they need to go <clears throat> soaring right up into the sky, mm. and as they soar higher and higher and higher, like, things start burning away, like, their yeah, clothes yeah, yeah. and their armor, and all, their, all they are left is with themselves, and mm. it's the same with Ramadan, like, like, the burning away of the sins and going through that tough program or exercise in order mm. for you to really feel the effects of you know Allah's presence in your life um, and yeah I guess like uh, coming back to just the aspect of Ramadan itself is this scorching heat and burning away our sins and renewing ourselves. Mm. One of the questions which which I always like ask people is, you know, what if Ramadan didn't exist? Mm. Like it's almost as if we would carry on every year not really truly understanding you know, who we are and our faults mm. and our downfalls and our success and progress in life. Like, it's almost like there's a, there would never be this annual reflective practice. Mm. So Ramadan has come to just kind of almost like, you know, hey guys, like big reminder and a red, red button yeah, yeah, to be yeah. like, hey Muslim, like, you know, like check yourself before you wreck yourself before mm. Ramadan comes. So yeah, that's the way that we like to see it. Because you mentioned um, setting a theme for Ramadan like what does that what does that mean because a lot of people is there's only kind of like a few very few themes that they would go for it's either like fasting or Quran yeah. is that what you mean by it or what do you specifically mean by yeah by I theme? mean like so we we like we love to teach so we do these workshops and yeah. we love to teach just like five step process to having an amazing Ramadan mm. and the first step is like basically evaluating where you are in life so you look at your story from last Ramadan to this Ramadan okay. and that's really helping you to understand like what have been the key highlights and lowlights of what's happened in the past year mm. and it's important to do that because like in on the night of Laylatul Qadr Allah Subhanahu wa Taala decrees everything that's going to happen to you in the next year mm. so it's like your annual things starts in Ramadan right it's not in December January it yeah, happens yeah. in the last 10 days of Ramadan so that happens first so you evaluate where you are mm. and then the second step is like where do you want to go so it's like what are your passions and aspirations in life from a religious perspective so we have we plan out our passions with our career and our family and our projects and our charity work mm. we never really pa plan out our passions with like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so do that to see like where do we want to go and then we create a du'a list to get you there. But then it's like, okay, you've opened up your mind and your heart and your soul. You realize what's really happened and the key mm. underlying themes, whether it was like gratitude or tawakkul or just being tested by Allah or financially, with family, mm. personally, with your nafs, whatever it may be. And then it's like, okay, let's set a theme for the year to tackle this, whether yeah. it's now being more grateful or being more patient or learning about the Quran or learning about the prophets. So setting that theme and then breaking that down into actionable goals for the month. I see, I see. It's quite interesting, actually. I mean, because obviously you, you, you must have worked with quite a few people now in terms of um, helping them um, with this journey in Ramadan and then beyond Ramadan. What, what have you kind of realized from like the before and after, if you compared with, with some of the people, the brothers and sisters that you've worked with, what what kind of differences have you seen in before they came and then after, the, you know? Yeah, subhanAllah, yes. Yeah, it's, it's an amazing, beautiful experience to to see that. Some some people have converted to Islam. Really? Through, yeah, through this sort Mashallah. of process. Some people have um, kind of reached out and emailed us and just through the beauty of understanding this process mm. and through the beauty of understanding what what Ramadan can do for us, some people mm. have converted. But for for the, the kind of the general Muslim these days, um, that transformation is always like a personal transformation. So they really identify like the crux of 
you know, what's wrong in their life. Yeah. And then they set a plan in place to tackle that. And then they start to realize, oh, actually, there's more barakah in my life now. There's more blessing. Mm. That was the one thing that was tripping me up on my journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I focused on it now. And now I'm able to do something else and something else. Mm. So it's really like it kind of kickstarts their journey, like their leap of faith towards Allah. And that's mm. the main like transformation that we see in people. Mm. Are you more like kind of, <clears throat> because obviously we're talking about literally thinking about the goals that you have mm. and then kind of writing it down. So for a lot of people, especially in the day and age we're in, it's quite old school, like yeah. to sit there and to kind of go through the motions and write things down and set targets. Rather, maybe, you know, nowadays people are just like, they, they might have a quick brainstorm and have a very kind of brief think and reflection mm. about Ramadan, just before Ramadan. So the stage we're in now, you know, just really quickly, okay, you know, Ramadan's coming. Cool, I want to better myself. And then that's kind of it. Like they mm. don't really dig further than that. It's always like, yeah, this Ramadan's going to be good. I'm going to better myself. And naturally they do. We're not saying they don't. But um, why is it that you take that approach of being kind of like more specific, writing things down, thinking more, um, as opposed to just saying, yeah, this is going to be the Ramadan, the best Ramadan yet? Yeah, it's just to have a tangible outcome. Mm -hmm. Like I I used to be like that as well, like go with the flow type person. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a few days before, let's see what I can do better myself. Yeah, I'll read more Quran, I'll pray and I'll fast. And, but at the end of Ramadan, there's no there's no like real increase in what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a, like a general increase which doesn't really result in anything. Mm -hmm. So it's like you have to mm -hmm. set a tangible goal. And it doesn't have to be a big goal. Like people... I find when they focus on something very specific, they come out of Ramadan like with the sense of accomplishing something. Yeah. So whether it's just, I don't know, knowing the the meaning of Surah Al-Ikhlas, right? That, that's enough, right? Mm. To, to conquer in the month of Ramadan. Or whether it's memorizing a Surah, or whether it's just focusing on our own habits or focusing on our bad habits and converting them into good habits. But it's really about having a true focus. And scientifically, when you write something down, it transfers it from the subconscious part of your brain to the mm. conscious part of your brain. So you're just more aware of like your surroundings, like you're centering yourself on focusing on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this kind of like process of writing things down, setting a tangible goal, mm. it helps you like have a sense of accomplishment. Mm. So like that's something that I personally started doing like recently as well so last year like me and my wife we were sitting down and we were like reading one jews reading one jews reading mm. one jews we got to the third jews and i was like like what is the point in reading the quran like we're reading 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 and we're not doing any understanding or we're not really knowing what it's saying etc mm. so i was like okay i'm going to generally read every day but i'm going to memorize uh surah taha right i'm just going to go for it mm. and so we did i did it and then i just immediately after like getting halfway through the memorization i didn't memorize the full thing i just started like thinking about musa alayhi salam in my everyday life what his story was, his struggle, and relating it to my story, my struggle. Mm -hmm. And I just left Ramadan with like, you know what, I've done something, I've accomplished something, like yeah. I know something more. It's just really as simple as that, yeah. So that's like the kind of tangible, focused way of I see, I see. tackling yeah, because, it. Yeah, because I think um, the focus is usually, though it is a virtuous act in and of itself, khatam of the Qur'an and trying to complete the Qur'an, which, mm. is, which is good. But you're right, I mean... When it comes to Ramadan, that's usually the kind of only focus. Yeah. So by the uh, by the end of Ramadan, this is just from my personal observations, is that a person, yes, may have uh, completed one or maybe even two, three khatams or, and completions of the Qur'an. But really, like what you just said there, really important, which is they didn't actually establish that relationship with the Qur'an, mm. which is that they just they can just say, like, yeah, I've completed it. Mm. And there's reward in that, especially in the month of Ramadan, the month yeah, of the Qur'an. definitely, yeah. But um, the fact that they they didn't kind of go away and try to memorize something um the fact that they didn't go away and maybe try to read up more even if it's a basic english translation a tafsir or something mm. i think doing that like like i said i think one of the key words is being specific mm. so rather than just saying i want to read the quran but now i actually want to build the connection with the quran i think that's actually really yeah. i think that's a, a piece of advice that a lot of people listening mm. and, and watching can actually take away for this ramadan 
Um, let's try something then. Uh, uh, this is really like kind of on the spot, right? <laughs> <Go for it. laughs> but uh, since I mean, since you've got the experience, let's let's try it now. Um, just to give kind of everyone a, a, an insight into how 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 we can focus on our Ramadan legacy. Mm-hmm. So let's say I have a specific goal, right? Mm-hmm. This Ramadan. So I'm I'm gonna say I haven't given it much thought, by the way, because I, I just I thought we'd just do this now. <laughs> uh, so inshallah, I'll go away and, and think about it further. But let's say. Uh, my um, my goal this Ramadan, uh, I'm, I'm trying to be specific here, is that um, I want to uh, become more spiritually um, productive. Let's just say, for example, mm-hmm. <clears throat> what do I mean by that? Uh, I mean um, that my spirituality doesn't um, kind of isn't confined to the mosque. It's kind of like on the go. Mm. So I want to implement spirituality. Uh, day-to-day life so as I'm commuting for example mm. um, I'm trying to read more Quran I'm trying to listen to more lectures etc so let's say that by the end of Ramadan I want to be more spiritually uh, proactive and, 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 and develop in that sense so I have that goal now what what's what's you, what's the next step for me what would you advise yeah, me now so I would then ask you like what are those times in the day where you feel that you're not spiritually productive okay is it the morning and then sometime in the afternoon, the evening, or is mm. it just the morning or just the evening or before you go to bed? So mm. what would your answer be? I think it would be probably, <clears throat> I think mornings are, are, are better for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, mornings I find it easier, fresh, fajr, you know, it's easy to make dua, etc. So I think mainly, probably by the time it gets to the evening, mm. where I've had a long day, tired, feeling quite, you know, uh, you know, l- low on energy. Mm-hmm. And that's when kind of, the even the spiritual element you know is not as much so by the time it comes to praying isha you know naturally it, people feel tired and then for me I, there's not much happening after that until mm. it's it's usually after i wake up you know the the beginning part of the day so that would be my answer so what okay. what would the next so step like, be yeah so <laughs> so like <laughs> evening spiritual like productivity yeah. isn't at its highest so what we'd then do is that we would try and set like a set of goals to help you like tackle this problem so number one you need to understand like why you're not spiritually productive mm. during this time and then number two is looking at the sunnah of the prophet and awesome. what he did like during this time yeah and then number three would be like g- even going outside the box of islam like what do other normal people do like the habits of you know mm. the secret successful millionaires yeah. and the habits of you know productivity experts and what do they do in the evening mm. so what i would like then encourage the person to do whether it's yourself or other people yeah is that uh, to like literally set a goal to like number one understand like why they're not mm. spiritually productive in this time what did the son of what did the prophet do and what did what do other people do like out with like the boundaries of islam and then through understanding that is then to then build up like a daily practice or a daily routine so number one is like understand so it's almost like reading like just read up look at the content available mm. online or in books on what is the best practice to do during the evening time and then number two would be doing a daily like almost like a daily routine for the evening uh, and setting that out and you know that through like learning and doing the researching mm-hmm. etc and try and implement to have a daily action for Ramadan to try and do that every day and then the third goal can be something else so like you try and like personalize it to yourself so like something yeah. that you would really look forward to doing each night so whether it's like I don't know having chocolate truffles or like yeah. whether it's um i don't know um reading a book or yeah. spending time with family so really about personalizing it so mm. but it's quite funny you say like your mornings are productive because normally like mornings is like <laughs> the main issue yeah, for yeah, yeah, for yeah. everyone so this comes up a lot like just that fudger mm. morning routine yeah and uh like when you read books and you talk you look at islamic books non-islamic books mm. you always have to like personalize that issue that you have and find a solution that's tailored for yourself so yeah. like first i used to have really rough terrible mornings and now i just have like a really nice coffee and that just motivates me to get up mm. now like should be that fajr motivates me to get up mm. and worship allah but the coffee motivates me a bit more and then i pray my fajr and then yeah, i'm yeah. fine so it's like really about personalizing <clears throat> it and making it like relevant to who you are Okay, yeah. interesting. Yeah, so I might have to go away and, and think about those <laughs> points. Uh, in terms of the daily kind of action, um, is that going to would you would you say be consistent and stick to the same action, or is that is that gonna am I gonna add more to it over the days? Yeah, so it, it's really about you, you. You start off. It's like you you set out your what your routine is gonna yeah. be, and you try it for like the first five, six, seven days, mm-hmm. and you realize that you know either this part I don't <clears throat> need or I need to add in another part. So it's yeah. just really this reiteration over time. But if you do something 
for 21 days in a row it becomes like a natural habit that you do so like mm. scientifically if you do something for 21 days and so like subhanallah like i guess like in the month of ramadan we have 21 days before ittikaf comes in to to build uh. up this habit in our life so i don't know if that's linked or not yeah, but yeah. yeah it's like it's really about building up that kind of daily routine but even beyond the daily routine like i think sometimes we get caught up in the productivity stuff for daily yeah, habits yeah. daily this daily that that kind of like doesn't really motivate me so mm. we're like really interested in the why like why do you need to have a spiritual productive routine in the evening yeah. or the morning <clears throat> what's going to like how are you going to reinvent yourself so that you do get up in the morning or maybe there's this one thing in your life mm. that's really really getting to you whether it's like you want to have a baby or a family or get married yeah. or have a great career or a job or really launch this project which you've been dying to do and maybe that's that real anchor in your life that's going to get you up in the morning or be spiritually productive in the evening mm. and that's what your driver is going to be so we try to find those drivers in people's life bring them out to the forefront and use that to anchor them to like propel themselves into the future. Mm, very interesting. I mean, one one issue I would say that a lot of people kind of can, can relate to is obviously Ramadan, <clears throat> as, as blessed as a month it is, um, in terms of our lifestyle, things haven't really changed. So meaning we still have to go to work in Ramadan. Most of us, um, you know, students, staff study, have it, especially at this point of the year, you know, a lot of students have exams even uh, now. It kind of coincides with Ramadan. So you have exam, you've got work, obviously you've still got the family, you've still got all these commitments, uh, but you're kind of trying to make the most out of Ramadan. Mm. So I feel like a lot of people, they're struggling with this, which is like, I'm super busy um, and I have so many other things to do and work is tiring me out, exams are stressing me out. How, but how can I still make the most of Ramadan? Obviously, in an ideal scenario, you've got the whole month free. Yeah. You can just do whatever. <laughs> and you just spend as much time in Ibadah and worship as, uh, as you want. But clearly, that's like that rules out 90-odd percent of us. Yeah. Because, you know, 90-odd percent of us don't have that luxury. Mm. So what would your kind of advice be uh, to, like, the majority of the people listening who yeah. have busy lifestyle? Uh, Ramadan Legacy started <clears throat> when, when I was starting full-time work. So it was okay. like... It triggered as a result of like, oh my God, I'm going to have no time to mm. like do all the things that I used to do in the month of Ramadan yeah. or like at least attempt to do them. So I was like, what do I do now? So like that, that was, a, so I used to work full time, like hectic, like 14 hour days and mm. like my backgrounds and like business and innovation and stuff. And I was like, God, like what on earth am I going to do? Like, how am I going to pray Fajr? How am mm. I going to do like do suhoor and do the du'as and everything like it's just way too much for me yeah. so like i think you just have to really analyze like the position that you're at with your career or your job or whatever it may be and just have like a daily checklist of the things that you feel that you can do to really like make the most of the mm -hmm. every day in ramadan like we try and like try and transform ourselves and everything that's great but if we can just transform like our day like we'd literally <laughs> like we would go like and then we can transform our week and our month mm -hmm. and our year and then our lives so th just building like a daily checklist of things that you can do in your day so i remember like i used to work in a call center before like i yeah. worked full time i used to just have a, pa a notepad and i used to be on my calls and stuff and i had like tally 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 mm -hmm. you know tally marks all over this jotter and then one of the managers came up she was like shabazz what are you doing i was like oh it's just like dhikr like because it's Ramadan and I was doing that whilst I was on my calls right so it's just it's just being conscious of Allah like wherever you are mm. so when you're on the train in the morning going to work like don't listen to music mm. listen try and listen to the Quran or a talk by a scholar or we're at lunchtime rather than going out for lunch because you're not fasting is like I don't know s spend time in the contemplation room at work yeah. and when you're coming home like just replace whatever you normally do with something like a spirit like a worshipping of Allah practice mm. and then over time mm. like you, you your day will be full of barakah I actually find that the less time you have in the day the more like ibadah that you manage to do yeah, like sometimes actually. when you have the whole day right you're like ah oh, chilling fine two yeah, o'clock yeah. four o'clock I'll read my one juice at five o'clock but you don't right but the less time you have the three hours that you have when you come back from work like you just really hone on and, and focus on yeah, it yeah that's true yeah actually you know what like for me now that you mention it it makes fasting easier for mm. me you know when you're busier yeah uh, and you're doing things it actually makes it easier yeah you know, especially with the long hours that we have now uh, if you're sitting at home all day then you know 
that you have an idle mind. So naturally, you're going to be thinking about, <laughs> yeah. right, you know, food and what's on the menu. And you, yeah. know, you go to the kitchen, pop in, check the fridge. Uh, so I, I, I've realized those days when it's like, for example, a weekend or a day when I'm a bit more free. Mm. Um, actually, it's more difficult because mm. time goes slower. But rather when you're busy, uh, like you kind of said, you're implementing all of your aspects of spirituality into your life. Mm. And you're kind of getting the day done. Mm. So by the time you come back, you've got the last few hours you cram everything in kind of mm. thing and, 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 and kind of, you know, take things in, in, in your stride. Uh, and it's actually easier. So, and, and another key word you mentioned was um, just being conscious at all times. Mm. And it's amazing because that is literally the outcome of fasting in the Quran. Like Allah says, so, you know, f- the fasting is there so that we can attain taqwa. Yeah. So literally that is the goal of fasting, yeah. which is, like you said, you're at work um, and you're just doing your dhikr. So a lot of people don't know this, that you can do the kid, you can make dua, you can read Quran anywhere. Like there's no kind of specific time for mm. it, specific place for it. You don't have to be in a mosque, you know, you don't have to be in your room. You can actually do it on the go. Mm. So I think that's a brilliant piece of advice for a lot of people, um, which is that don't wait until just before iftar or something, you know, to just kind of make your dua. Do it throughout the day. Um and yeah, I think it's something for me as well, <clears throat> personally um, when I am busy and things like that's what I, as I'm walking or as I'm commuting like a drive like a standard especially in London like you know a standard drive which is supposed to take 15 minutes is easily 40 minutes yeah. because of <laughs> traffic and things right so when you're stuck in traffic and you're not doing much to be honest with you so imagine Ramadan you're just on the train or you're stuck in a bit of traffic you're driving you, you, you might even be walking mm. uh, what can we do in that time? I think that's a very important question, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Like, I've always loved to, like, I had this idea of having, like, this Muslim drive time app where it's like you, you're you on your drive, whether it's yeah. 15, 20, half an hour, and you click the button and it just pops up with, like, a random thing of your interest and nice. whether it's a, a talk or a yeah. Quran recitation, whatever it may be. But, like, I like I started I, I started a new job last October and like I started driving a lot like it was like two hour drive to this office an hour here yeah. or half an hour <clears throat> there and I was like how can I make this time like you know like useful and beneficial yeah. how can I feel like the peace and stuff like that as well and I've always had this attraction to Surah Rahman but I've mm. never like learned it or memorized it or know really what it means. So I thought, you know what, like, I'm going to try and, like, tackle, like, at least memorizing a bit of this. So I just started listening to it every day. Yeah. And I used an app called Quran Majid. So, it, like, it allows you to play a certain amount of ayahs. Then it repeats it for, like, ten times. So you can yeah. say, ten ayahs, I want to r- repeat these ten ayahs ten times. Mm. So I did that. And then after six weeks, I, like, had memorized the whole thing. Just because, like, I was just conscious that every morning this is what I wanted yeah. to do. And then for a few weeks after that, I started listening to, to the tafsirs of it. So it's kind of just like, like, just pick a very focused thing that you want to like. Mm. It has to be something that you want to do, right? Like I find as if w- people like, we feel like we need to read the Quran and we feel like we need to, I don't know, do prayers and all the rest of it. But what is it, what like attracts you like mm. towards Islam? Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that he has blessed each of our souls with talents, right? So some people are just naturally inclined to being more academic. Some people are naturally inclined to like their voice, right? So you're like a poet, right? Mm -hmm. You love using your voice as an instrument to spread good. So like some people might be great at reciting the Quran, so just focus on that for this Ramadan. Some people might not be great at that, but they love stories, so they might look at the stories of the prophets. So focus on that. So like, look at like, what do you like to do and mm. do that more in Ramadan and have a focus goal and like try to achieve that. Yeah, because yeah. you mentioned Surah, Surah Al-Rahman and for me it was Surah Al-Mulk. Mm. So it's, it's a nice kind of, it's a short Surah, 30 yeah, verses, that's right? right. Um, and there is a virtue of reciting it in the night time yeah. specifically. Um, so what one thing that I, I used to do uh, because of just where I used to live. So I used to, I used to use a bus at the time. So I, I calculated that by the time I, I come off uh, from the bus and, and the walk home, um, basically, I think from the bus stop to home back then, it was like six, seven minutes to kind of walk. Mm. So what I realized was, because by that time I had memorized Surah Al-Mulk. So what I can actually do <clears throat> while I'm walking is I can recite Surah Al-Mulk. Mm. Uh, and this, obviously, I'd get home in the evening. So, so this is the perfect time to recite Surah Al-Mulk. Uh, so as I'm walking, literally, it would take me about five, six minutes to finish. So by the time I get to my doorstep, mulk is done. (laughs) 
<laughs> which is which which was crazy because the nice to think you should be sitting in this seat. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, it's it's crazy because but, but when I used to think about it, I was like, you know what? Even though it only took five six minutes, if I went home and and I, and I put my bag down mm. and I and I just relaxed, those five six minutes would have seemed like a long time to take a specific time out and then to recite Surah Al-Mulk. Because, you know, by the time you get home, family, and then, you know, you've got you've got other things to do. You need to eat. You, you need to do... You've got different tasks. So, and then plus you want to relax as well. You're tired. So it's quite... It's like a... It's, it's a funny, like, psychological thing where I've just utilised the time. Mm. It's like dead time, isn't it? Like that... I wasn't doing anything. I was walking. Yeah. I could have done anything in that time. I could have just been lost in my own thoughts yeah but then if i you know but it, it made a difference because i went home and i didn't have to take that extra time out now i can just go and carry on with my task mm. so i think that kind of um embedded you could say like yeah. sp- spirituality i think yeah. is really important, especially in ramadan I think yeah could, definitely like these these moments like small moments every day mm. like they also just provide so much barakah in your life so mm. like started this new job and i was trying to memorize surah rahman yeah and I, I guess i should have been listening to like business related things in the morning so i could get to know the job <laughs> yeah, and the yeah. industry and stuff and i didn't but my first three months at work was like the most successful first few months at work like I've ever experienced in my life and I was thinking like why is this happening why is everything Mm. happening so well for me I was like maybe it's because I've made this effort to recite Surah Rahman like in the Mm. morning and memorize it and stuff like that as well so it was almost like I don't know you have this like trust in Allah that if you strive towards him he's going to just bring barakah and blessing to everything else that you're doing Uh, and I truly believe that like I didn't used to before like but now like I really do yeah Yeah, it's beautiful it's a beautiful feeling Um, something else I was going to say is that Ramadan comes uh, and this is kind of like again it's it's a standard procedure for many of us and we just we want to give it our all Mm. so we like you know we're going taraweeh uh, suhoor time we're up before that to hajjud um, <clears throat> you know fasting throughout the day and we're, we're doing so much and then what kind of happens is so this is the norm in Ramadan where and it's not judging anyone any particular individual it's just the norm is from observation standard observation is first three four five six nights or days mm. in Ramadan it's like masjid's packed and slowly what starts happening is is like the numbers are <laughs> kind of drifting right so by the time you're like in the 10th 11th night of Ramadan like the masjid is kind of back to normal again yeah. and then it kind of comes back towards the last few nights Laylatul Qadr vibe mm. and then people are kind of back on it again so I think one uh, for me like when I when I kind of reflected on that why is it that you know six seven nights everyone's on it and then next thing you know they're gone is I think a lot of it's to do with burnout as well mm. where people where they where they entered Ramadan and it's a good thing it's a good feeling like I want to give it my all mm. but then what happens very quickly is they realize Oh, I can't actually keep up with any of this. Mm. So, uh, uh, let's talk about burnout. Like, how can you kind of avoid that that spiritual burnout? Let's yeah. call it. I don't know if you can avoid it. But yeah, <laughs> I think people have like there's this this question kind of like I know a lot of people speak about the kind of burnout aspect and stuff yeah. like that as well. Um, I don't think you can avoid it. Like when you were talking at the start about this, the word the origins of the word Ramadan yeah. from Ramad, which is like this intense heat. Through every um, kind of spiritual practice, there is this element where it becomes difficult upon you and it becomes hard. So mm. like whether you're on Hajj or Umrah or praying throughout the night, um, there's this element in our worship where it does become hard and it does become difficult. And yeah. that is like in for Ramadan, I guess it's like the middle of Ramadan, right? The mm. middle 10 days where it becomes really difficult. But I personally believe that just that perseverance and just that consistence of what you're trying to do in yeah. that month in the middle is is fine. I was at I was at a course like a few months ago. It mm. was at uh, Cambridge Muslim College, and so this like Islamic kind of psychologist expert came yeah. along, and he was talking about the idea of praying and all the rest of it. And so he drew up in the on the board like kind of like dots. Mm. And then a line. So it was kind of like a line with lots of dots on them, kind of like connect four, you could say. Mm. And he was explaining, like, I can't remember exactly what he said, but like from a Quranic perspective, <clears throat> is yeah. that we don't 
have to have an amazing fajr experience every morning or we don't have to have an amazing experience praying like throughout the day all five prayers we just have to at least make sure that we're doing the prayer mm -hmm. itself so i remember it at the masjid like three four years ago i was proper like shattered man like i was literally <laughs> like about to fall down because yeah. of ramadan and work and all the rest of it and i was coming up for the prayer like just in in the line we're all kind of ready to start i think it was either isha or tarawi and there was an uncle g next to me and then he was like what's wrong shabazz i was like man i'm just so tired and he said something to me and mm. it's literally stuck with me since that day he goes when a fire is burning whether you put on clean water or dirty water, the fire still goes out. Mm. And like it literally like it stuck with me like <laughs> and it's yeah. like I would never speak to the uncle G, but he <laughs> randomly said that to me. And it's the same in Ramadan. Like it's just that the practice and you might not necessarily feel it and mm. because you're burned out and all the rest of it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like recrafting you like a chess mm. piece. He's like chiseling away all those unnecessary things yeah. about you. So at the end of Ramadan, you're like this renewed person. Mm. I think one, because the thing is, like like you mentioned, your experience with the with the, with the the teacher or the psychologist that, that said, the main thing is kind of just doing, mm. right? Rather than being fixated on. Obviously, it's good to have that experience and to make sure that you have that khushu and, you know, all of that. Um but actually doing because I think another kind of we could say an issue in Ramadan is again it's all to do with that zeal and the passion the motivation that people have in Ramadan which is that you know uh, a lot of people they, they end up putting more emphasis on we could say the kind of voluntary acts and then that affects their fard and mm. the obligation so because they're up all night praying uh, you know whether it's tarawih or tahajjud uh, which is you know, um, the voluntary, let's just say, right? Uh, or reciting Quran again. It's that's 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 your kind of you know extra voluntary act for Allah. And what happens is that affects their fajr. Mm. So so this is actually you know what we would say again. That whole burnout aspect is a, a different kind of perspective on the burnout. Mm. Is don't burn yourself out doing voluntary acts. Yeah, that's when right. When it's going to affect. So for example, you lose sleep during the night. This is more like a practical thing. If you lose sleep during the night. And what what that's going to do is going to affect your fast, which is again an obligation mm. during the day. It's going to make it more difficult, mm. um, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, what's your what's your thoughts on on that? Yeah, like you definitely have to prioritize mm. like your obligatory acts of worship. Yeah. But even in Ramadan Legacy and our app and our planner and things like that, the first it, it's all centered around the obligatory acts of worship that you need to do, like the fasting, mm. the, the prayers. Even Taraweeh is not like a fard, right? But yeah. it's kind of like, it's kind of naturally now is a yeah. part of the fard because of the society that we live in. So that's there as well. And then beyond that is like, so so in the app itself, like in one of the sections, it goes through the obligatory acts of worship. And then yeah. at the bottom is the optional acts of worship, like memorizing knowledge and then doing like a daily deed in the month of Ramadan. But yeah, I think I wouldn't try to like discourage people from those extra voluntary acts, mm -hmm. but it definitely has to be like, like limited in terms of the time that you spend on them because yeah. your day should be centered around the obligatory acts of worship like your prayers and reading mm. the quran etc um so yeah like it, it, it's almost like it's like you have your o2 package and then you've got your bolt ons right yeah, like you yeah, don't yeah. get a bolt on without your main package so like figure out what that package is yeah, for you yeah, and yeah. it is like your five <clears throat> prayers reading the quran connecting to it um, you know, rectifying your your sins, etc. Forgiveness, mercy mm. to other people and yourself, and to with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So define your package and then have your little bolt ons on after that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it reminds me actually of a story last Ramadan. Um, there was this brother who came to the masjid, uh, and this was in the masjid that I was actually uh, I was uh, I spent the month being an imam in that in that particular masjid. So um, what happened is uh, he came and he seemed quite um, quite worried, and I was like, "What's what's the problem?" And he said, "Look, you know, I, I'm I'm kind of basically his issue was he's trying to spend as much time in the masjid as possible, mm. which is brilliant, like great Ramadan, perfect. Um, but then his issue was, ah, oh, but from time to time I message my wife." And I, and I check up on the kids mm. and I'm seeing if she's okay. Is that all right? Like, am I spending too much time on my phone? <laughs> so I was like, 
no i mean i said it's, it's perfectly fine i said because you being in the masjid like spending as much, much time here that is an extra kind of thing you're doing it's voluntary mm. but you spending time with your family and checking up on your kids that's mm. an obligation like yeah. you're a husband you're a father <laughs> right so rather than spending your entire day and night in the mosque definitely go home spend time with your family mm. check up on them call them you know mm. so i think it is a really common um, kind of thing where people and it's very, it's very, we could say, innocent as well. It, we're not saying that people are doing it on purpose. Like people, they would just want to do more. Coming back to what we were speaking about in the beginning, mm. you have that, you know, Ramadan comes, you want to leave a legacy. Who doesn't? Mm. Uh, but then doing that, I think, sometimes we kind of miss the bigger picture. Yeah. And I guess through Ramadan legacy and through what you're doing, it helps you kind of, like we said, be specific and, and focus on more things. Mm. Uh, I want to kind of also um, just cover... Um, in terms of beyond Ramadan, because of course, you know, <laughs> life goes on, right? Uh, day, Ramadan <laughs> comes to an end. <laughs> I know it's quite it's quite blunt, but it's true, right? R- Ramadan comes to an end. It's a sad feeling. No mm. one likes it. Um, everyone misses Ramadan. Eid day, happy, celebrate. That's why Allah gives us Eid, you know, celebrate. Uh, you know, well done on your achievements kind of thing. Mm. And then it's like, what do I do? You know, people people attach themselves so much to Ramadan. Mm. It's like that feeling coming back from Umrah or Hajj. You know, you're back in, you land back in wherever it is, London or Scotland. And mm. you're like, oh God, where? Like, am I back here again? I have to go to work tomorrow. So it's that feeling where like you've become so attached to a place. In our case in Ramadan, you've become attached to like this time mm. and that environment, which uh, sadly, the environment doesn't always last, you know, mm. in the masjid, in the community, etc. So, what you know in terms of Ramadan legacy, because obviously you use the word legacy. It, do you also focus on what comes next after mm. Ramadan? Yeah, like sadly, the month of Ramadan comes to an end, and I guess like spiritually, the month has its own blessings. Like that's yeah. why we feel that feeling at the end of Ramadan because the month is over, and mm. you know spiritually, from a you know a unseen perspective, you know things are changing <coughs> right yeah. when Ramadan finishes, and there's. The scholars have said that actually the whole point of Ramadan is to like start your entire year. Mm. So it's just the perspective that we see Ramadan as a a 30 day kind of training program or a 30 day, you know, kind of exercise to accomplish something and achieve something. But the scholars have said that the goals that you should set in advance and in Ramadan should actually last for like beyond the month of Ramadan. Mm. So don't select something whereby after 30 days it's over and that's it. Yeah select something which you can continue beyond like the month of Ramadan and that helps you to like spiritually connect to the month all year round. Yeah. The second thing is like it's all about promoting and perfecting the act of fasting as well. So fasting is like throughout the entire year and subhanAllah we were doing some research and most people might know this anyway but it's amazing how in the times and the days and the months we were encouraged to fast are the same days and times where our deeds are all collected and presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we're encouraged to fast on a Monday and a Thursday because, you know, it was a sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu And that's as far as like the kind of knowledge goes. But actually in a Monday and a Thursday, our deeds are collected and presented to Allah. Mm. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was saying that, you know, when my deeds are being collected and presented to Allah, like I want to be in like the purest state that I can. So that's like why I'm fasting. And even like, before the month of Ramadan and the month of Shaban, our deeds are collected and we're sent to Allah and we're encouraged yeah. to fast throughout this month. So it's really about fasting throughout the year. Mm. And that that idea of fasting allows us to connect to Allah throughout the year as well. So through Ramadan Legacy, what we do is like through the app and through like just our communication as well, yeah. like our email and our social media, we help people connect to Ramadan through this act of perfecting our fast Mm. all year round and also this act of like spiritually like rejuvenating ourselves or spiritually like trying to transform ourselves beyond the month as well so like imam ghazali in his workbook discipline and disciplining the soul yeah he talks about how do we strive for allah and connect to him and he goes there's four pedestals to connecting to allah and those four pedestals are hunger sleeplessness mm. solitude and silence and those four things happen when you fast yeah. so it's all about really getting into the act of fasting and through the act of fasting you become more conscious of allah mm. and you spiritually connect to him as well that's brilliant um i think the, the work that you know, you're doing with Ramadan Legacy is brilliant. Um, you mentioned an app, 
but also um, what do you call it? Would you, would you call it a planner um, that you have? Which is like I said, it's like going down the old school route, which yeah. is like <laughs> let's let's look at something, let's write something down. But of course, now that we've discussed it, it makes more sense to me and to other people why we should write things down and be specific. Let's talk about the planner that you've got, yeah. uh, the Ramadan Legacy Planner. Uh, what's so what's what's special about it is it is it just a diary or <laughs> is it just a diary or what what kind of specific things are we looking at here in this planner yeah. the planner takes you through like a step-by-step meaningful journey of ramadan okay so we started off with a mobile app around five years ago and now like we have mm-hmm. around a quarter of a million people that use it around oh, wow. the world so alhamdulillah like people People connect to it. It yeah. doesn't have like millions of downloads like yeah, yeah. the other apps. But the people that use it are like, they're like die hardcore mm-hmm. users. So if anything happens in the app, they email us, message <laughs> us what's wrong and this and that. So yeah. we're always like trying to make it better. But a lot of our users started saying that we now want a more in-depth experience of Ramadan. Or we actually, we want to <clears throat> have a digital detox. We don't want to be connected in the month of Ramadan. Okay. So that's when we thought, okay, why don't we have a physical product? So we launched this planner, which really takes you through a step-by-step meaningful journey mm. of the month of Ramadan. So stage one is like knowledge, but it's inspirational knowledge. It's not like fasting in the month of Ramadan, yeah. acquire taqwa. It's more about like, here is a roadmap for your Ramadan and mm. how to make it the best Ramadan that you can. So that's stage one. Stage two is in preparation, exactly what we've been talking about, setting a theme for the year. Yeah. Where have you been? Where do you want to go? The du'as to get you there. And a theme and a set of goals for this Ramadan. So that's stage two. Mm. Stage three is like a 30-day action plan. So like every day, here's your schedule, here's what you do, here's a checklist, daily gratitude, daily reflection space, etc. And then stage four is like leaping beyond the month of Ramadan. So writing down what you can continue yeah. and so you can make a plan for that as well. So that's kind of like how the planner is structured. Brilliant, brilliant. And how can we get our hands on one of these? <laughs> yeah, so we, we sell them on our website, ramadanlegacy.com. Um, we've got two editions this year we've got the Radiant Rose Gold version so mm. we collaborated with an Islamic artist Mariam Golubiva who's in Russia okay. and she hand drawn like the embossing design wow. on the front cover this year and so it's amazing it's all made from like artificial leather so like no cows were mm. harmed and the paper is also like wood free paper like we sourced it from Japan because we really oh, wanted wow. to be dead set on yeah. making sure that like the materials were halal or the materials were like as <laughs> organic as possible yeah, yeah. and then we have like a professional black edition this year as well and that's for people that want that subtle look you know mm. the people with the black iphone case and <laughs> black yeah. pen and no one mysterious <laughs> I, and all I the rest of it. That's you. <laughs> that's me, yeah. <laughs> so um so yeah you can just pre-order them or now i guess order them from our website ramadanlegacy.com brilliant i want to i want to end with um kind of just just taking a step back now, we've spoken about so many different things, mm. right? Um, just kind of final pieces of advice, because um, I know you talk about crushing Ramadan, mm. uh, conquering Ramadan, you know, just really getting the best out of it. So what's like, you know, I know we've discussed many things already, but what's like your final kind of tips, something practical for our listeners and viewers on, of Ilmfeed to take away and, and actually, you know how I said at the beginning, we, so we're going to say this is the best Ramadan and it goes by mm-hmm. how can we definitely make this Ramadan yeah. the best inshallah I was reflecting on what you were saying and I've learned like just from this podcast itself uh, in like the tafsir of um, Surah Taha when mm-hmm. Musa alayhi salam is speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the first time like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Musa alayhi salam grab the snake and don't be afraid yeah and so there's this massive like discussion in the seer of why did allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say grab the snake first don't be afraid mm. as opposed to don't be afraid like just grab the snake yeah and so the whole aspect is to really like just launch yourself into the month of ramadan and mm. launching yourself towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and taking a leap of faith in life like really like this ramadan just take that leap of faith towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Really like whether whatever type of person that you are, whether you're a productive person, non-productive yeah. or a spiritual person, whatever it may be, whatever fits for you, create that journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and write down what it's going to look like. Yeah. And then just grab grab it by the hand, by the horns and, <laughs> and go through it. Yeah. I love it. I love that piece of advice. Take that leap of faith. Yeah. It doesn't matter what stage you are in your yeah. journey in, in terms of spirituality. 
Ramadan is here mm. and Allah is waiting for us literally in this month. Yeah. He's ready to like <laughs> just give to us. Why not? You know, yeah. why not? I love it. Jazakallah uh, khair, Shabazz. It's you been so really much. good. I've learned so much uh, from this from this uh, show and from our discussion. And I think definitely, inshallah, there's things that I can take away. I'm sure everyone yeah. listening and watching can definitely take things away. Yeah. Um, but of course, to further kind of look into to look into this and explore, of course, uh, this is a message for, for everyone, uh, is definitely check out the Ramadan uh, Legacy app. It's available. Uh, and the new planners, uh, you've seen it, you've heard about it now. Make sure you order one, inshallah. Check out Ramadan Legacy, support their work. And in general, let's all focus this Ramadan, inshallah, on our own Ramadan Legacy. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it the best Ramadan. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our actions, inshallah. Well, Shabazz, once again, uh, we really appreciate your time. Exactly. Okay. No, Thank thanks you. for having us. You guys. So and may Allah bless you in your work with Amin. Ramadan Legacy and, and, and may He take it further, inshallah. And you too. Thank you so much. Uh, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. We hope you've enjoyed this episode uh, of the Elm Feed podcast from your host, Shabir. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.